And so there's a few things um, that I want to point out here. Let's see, I think I ran out of slides, so I'm just going to start this fresh new slide. Okay, so if I give you just kind of a general, start to give you a general plot of what this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution looks like. So if I plot V on this axis and F of V, so velocity and the fraction of molecules with that velocity, then I get a very famous looking, oops, I get a famous looking curve called the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Man, there's not supposed to be a little thingy there. It's supposed to be a nice smooth function. It, it appears as if it should be like a Gaussian distribution, but it's not. It's not Gaussian. It is weighted heavy at the tail end. And so if I said, like, for example, this is the distribution at T1, and I think I need to make uh, some more room here. And I'm also going to define, um, I'm going to say T1 is less than T2 is less than T3. And if I look at these three different temperatures, right, then um, these are the distributions that I get. So T2 would look something like this. And T3 would look something like this. And what I want you to take note of, the maximum of these curves goes out to larger and larger velocities. So this is consistent with what you learned in general chemistry with respect to gases. The more, uh, the higher the temperature of the gas, the faster it moves, and the more chaotic it is. So as the temperatures get bigger, this distribution spreads out. As it turns out, if you integrated the area under all three of these curves, they would all give you the same area because we're talking about the same relative population of molecules. However, for a higher temperature, the population of those states will be spread out. So there'll be a much larger range of velocities for a larger temperature, which is consistent with our postulates of the equal partition theorem. And so the last thing that I want to talk about here is um, some calculus analysis on these distributions. And I'll just go and draw one representative distribution here. So as I said, it's not quite a Gaussian. It's kind of, uh, it's weighted towards the heavier side. Okay. So here, this area that I'm calling, that's the most probable speed, which I'll call C star. Um, out right here, I'll give this big, long, dashed lines. Um, so let me write that down. So that's most probable is the peak. Okay. Then out here is actually the mean, the arithmetic mean given by C bar. So because this is an uneven distribution, if we took the area under these curves, um, the area on the left side of the mean would be the same as the area on the right side of the mean. But it's going to be a different velocity than the most probable velocity because it's not a symmetrical distribution. And then finally, out here to an even higher velocity would be called the RMS, which is the root mean square. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about RMS, root mean square. Okay. And so I'm going to back up one slide here. And so here I have all these different um, velocities, most probable speed. So again, I'll write that as C star. The RMS is just C and the means, mean speed is C bar. So I'm going to write how to find these using calculus, um, but I'm not going to finish off the solutions. Um, the solutions are in my fall 19 notes, which are posted, but you should definitely try to see, um, see if you can knock off the dust of your calculus and, and figure these things out. Okay. So most probable speed, if we go back and look at this for a second. So the most probable speed is at the very top of this peak. So think about that for a minute. How would you do that? Okay, 
you would do that with the following f prime of v set equal to zero right you take the first derivative of that function and set it equal to zero and the result that you should get you should give this a try c star will equal to rt divided by big capital m all square root so see if you can get that and the hint that I'll give you, I'll give you a hint on this most probable speed. D, dx of e to the power u equals e to the power u times du dx, right? So if, when you're taking the derivative of a function with an exponential, you just keep the e to the u, but then times um, the derivative of what's inside the exponential right, du dx, okay? So see if you can arrive at this solution. So the mean speed, I'm going to write out over here. I'm going to start it over here for the mean, okay? So I'll also give that another symbol, bracket v bracket. So that's another way of writing the mean. And we can always find an arithmetic mean through integration by saying from 0 to infinity of v times f of v times dv. This is actually the formula for determining a mean when you have um, an area under the curve, okay? And let's see, the solution for that one, did I write it down? Let's see, the mean speed. So the mean speed you should get for this one, c bar, is 8 RT divided by pi times big capital M square root. So see if you can arrive at this result and the hint that I'll give you for doing this one is one of these integral solutions, which is uh, when you take the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, x cubed times e to the negative ax squared dx equals 1 over 2a squared. So that's your hint for trying to solve that integral. And then finally, the root mean square speed is exactly that. It's the root of the mean squared. Okay? So I can write that as the following. Okay? So brackets mean mean. The brackets mean, the mean, the, arith the arithmetic mean, okay, squared, and the root. So the root mean squared, okay? And so that equals C, which equals very similarly to the mean that I wrote here. So integral of, um, excuse me, we can integrate that from zero to infinity since we don't have any, uh, we don't have anything in the negative velocity ranges, okay? So we wouldn't get any benefit from integrating to negative infinity. Um, okay, so then now that's going to be v squared f of v dv square root. And then um, let's see here. All, so all this is in brackets. So then you take that final result, all square root, okay? And so your hint for, I'll give you the solution, for the RMS speed, um, you should get 3 RT divided by M, all square root, okay? And then your hint for this one is for RMS, Another one of these integral table solutions, 0 to infinity, x to the fourth, e to the negative, ax squared, dx, and this has a standard solution, which equals 3 eighths pi over a to the fifth power, all square root. So see if you can do these. See if you can knock off some of that dust. Um, from your calculus days. I have the solutions available in the notes, but I think this will be some good practice for you. 
Um, okay, so that covers it for week one. Um, starting next week, we're going to get into um, thermodynamics. We will, so we will actually start with chapter one, okay? Um, and I also, I'm not going to go over the learning goals um, here in this video, but in the module one on Canvas, download the learning goals sheet and make sure that you're making good progress through those. And I'm going to talk more about those learning goals during our live meeting on Friday. Okay, folks, I will see you then.